Hey guys, this is John and I'm playing ZZYZZX in the 5 minute pool on ICC. It's been a very long but productive day for me. I have exactly enough energy for one 5 minute game. So I'm going to attack my opponent with the force of a thousand suns. So let's do this. Bishop G4, just trying to frustrate white's development a little bit. They'll probably play the knight out to F3 soon. They could try to chase down my light square bishop if they want with G4. But bishop g6, I wouldn't mind to see that weakening of white's king side. I don't often play the position with the pawn on e5, so maybe I'll do that. And they do chase me. Okay. Hmm. And f4. Now let's play e6. we got to rule out f5. Hmm. Very intriguing approach. So basically trying to prove that this bishop is a bad piece. So if I take pawn takes, then f5 is right on top of me. I'll get some counterplay because white's king is open, but white's idea is challenging, no doubt. Well, I feel like I should start with taking at least. Now I probably have to play h6. h6 or h5. h5, f5, take, take, bishop h7. Mm. That's interesting. I'm going to try that. It's more dynamic. I'm just worried if I play h6 that my position will become passive. So let's do this. I assume he'll take with the e-pawn. Mm, takes the other way. Well, I haven't had much success in predicting my opponent's moves so far. <laughs> okay, now I feel like I should play bishop c5 and stop white from castling. Let's do that. I would have taken the other way if I was white. But they seem content to do it this way. Now, do I want to castle or play something else like knight bd7? e5 might be a concern. e5, e6. So maybe I should castle, as weird as that looks. I kind of think I should. So if I castle knight b3, what's up there? Maybe queen e7 is a better move here. So trying to attack the pawn on e4. Let's do that. I'm just envisioning white moving this knight and hitting my bishop. So it's nice to add a little counterweight and attack that pawn. So what to do here? Knight g5. Okay, well, now I can blockade this e5 square, so let's do that. If knight c4, maybe b5. Maybe just castle queenside. I can deliver a check. Yeah, let's check first and just see if I can get them to play c3. And then we'll pull the bishop back. I don't mind this trade if white wants to take my light square bishop. That would do me a big favor. Get rid of one of my worst pieces right now. I don't think they'll play that way. Bishop here. Can I snatch on e4? Knight takes e4. No, I can't. There's a bishop sitting here. Duh. <laughs> I can play bishop g3 check though. And in fact, I think I will. Disturb white's king. Weird game so far. Very strange game. I'm behind on the clock. I need to make that up. Bishop f2. Let's take that guy. Knight g4. Knight takes e4 does not work. Knight g4. He might be able to play queen h4 even. I think I'm just going to cast, so, ooh, queen takes a7. Got to watch out for that. Knight e5 is obvious, but he's just going to castle long. It's one thing I don't like about that move. Okay, let's do this. And if queen f4 or queen h4, I'll probably put this knight on e5. But I don't want that queen attacking my pawn on a7. That's why I'm playing this way. Another line here is h takes g4, queen takes g5, rook takes h5, queen takes g4. I'm hoping that gives me enough play. I 
I can tell I'm a little foggy right now. This game is interesting to me because I'm playing while not in peak mental condition, let's say. And usually I don't like to do that, but it's a good challenge to yourself every once in a while. Just don't make it a habit. Okay, so he goes for this line. Now, he could play G takes H5. That's another move that's definitely possible. But then I get Knight E5 in. Okay, so he's going to take with a Rook. So, yeah, let's take here. What's the idea? Bishop F3? It's Bishop F3. I have Queen F4, stopping him from castling. I don't mind that. He wants a trade. Hmm. Take, take, Knight E5, perhaps? Or take, take, hmm. I can go knight e5 right away, too, if I want. Take, take, castle short? Seems kind of crazy, but maybe okay. Nah, it's not a great solution. Hmm. This is an important decision, so I'm spending a little time. It's between knight e5 or taking. I don't like my options between those two. I'm going to play knight e5. I might have to put the knight on h6, I'm thinking, as much as I would hate to do that. So let's say trade and then maybe king e2. If he castles, I might even have knight e3. So probably king e2. Okay, does that instead. Okay, let's go here. I'm going to attempt to reorganize f6, maybe bishop to g8. I've got all my pieces stacked on the h file. <laughs> They've seen better days. If he plays f6, I'll play... Probably king f8. Just defend the g7 pawn. Time going to be a big factor for both of us very soon. He castles. Okay. So let's do this. If knight d4, bishop e6. I'm wary of an e5 pawn breakthrough as well. So my, my structure is suddenly pretty good over here. Pawn on g7, pawn on f6. So he might be looking to disrupt that. I'll play bishop g8 next if I get a chance. Bishop f7, king e7, connect the rooks together. Yeah, and there he goes. He plays this. That's challenging. Okay, I think I'm going to do this. And then if he takes here, I'm going to push g6. Try to kick this rook out. And then maybe knight f7 after that. Not sure I should have done this. My original plan was uh, actually king f7, but I noticed he had rook h1. And that knight would have been in trouble. Maybe I should have just taken on f6 instead of pushing g6 a couple moves ago. But he's getting really low. He seems hesitant now. Okay, so is he going to trade and play rook e7? Probably will. He does. Okay, I'm going to go for counterplay. I'm going to let him take this pawn and go knight e5 after that. Try to get into the d3 square. Hit the bishop. Bishop e2 maybe. Okay, he does that instead. Again, just playing for counterplay in time. He's way down on time now. Rook takes d4 as a threat. Let's take this guy. It's not blunder checkmate. We're going to go back here. Yeah, he just lost on time. Strange ending to that one because he was the one pushing the pace at the beginning of the game. And he let the clock get the better of him in the final 15 moves or so. Not a very long game, only 36 moves. So it's strange to see that happen. 
So, what to think about this game? I underestimated White's idea in the opening. This pawn blitzkrieg on the king side, h3, g4, f4. Suddenly, after he got those three moves in, and then hit me with e4, that was the move that really gave him a lot of play. f5 was on the horizon, and I had to go passive with my bishop. I had to hide it on h7. I was criticizing his decision to play g takes f5. I thought e takes f5 was more clear cut, opening the bishop, opening the e file. And when you're in a position like this as black, you have to play dynamically to compensate. If I play normal moves here, I'm just going to have a bad position because you can't you can't hide the fact that your bishop is terrible on h7. So uh, there's this book called, uh, what's it called? The Method in Chess by Grandmaster Dorfman. And he talks about the static versus dynamic balance in chess. And I like this analogy he gives. He describes it as a scale. So when the position is bad for you statically, the static factors of the position are wearing, wear, wearing your position down. You have to compensate by playing dynamically. It's, it's almost forced. You can't continue to play in static fashion and hope for the best. It's not going to turn around. So that's why I was doing weird stuff like, you know, here throwing in this bishop b4 check, trying to force some weakness in white's position. Uh, bishop g3 helped a little bit, maybe inconveniencing his king and his coordination moves like knight g4 i gotta do this sort of thing because my position is not looking good otherwise i think white negotiated the complications pretty well this idea caught me off guard just playing queen f3 looking for a trade and purely playing against the bishop on h7 white is saying i'm going to move my king or castle get the other rook over to h1 and just attack this pin piece what are you going to do about it and I decided that my best course of action was to put the knight on h6 so as to free up the bishop, try to play f6 and bishop g8, reorganize. I think white just spent too long looking for a good continuation. If they would have just played fast, very likely I uh, would have been unable to cope. g6, I think, was a good move. Right after, a couple moves after I made that move, I was saying maybe I should have played g takes f6. But I see now if I would have done that, he just doubles. And I can't play knight f7 because of rook takes h8. So I'll take a look at the opening. Maybe bishop f uh, bishop to g4 is just not that great of a move. Also take a look at maybe this position right around here. Because I feel like white is close to achieving a big advantage. Or capitalizing on their already existing advantage. And he just didn't do it. Okay. So g3, d5. This is the, the lazy title player opening without the knight developing to f3. So that's the only difference. We've seen this a lot on my channel. I played this myself as, as white many times, but usually with knight f3 involved. But white's delayed knight f3 approach was intriguing, especially since he pushed the f-pawn. So let me just add in the engine right around here. This computer thinks I'm okay. So did I respond incorrectly to e4? That's probably what happened. Either that or the engine just doesn't recognize that black can experience problems with f5 coming. So I took and played h5. So the computer likes h6 a little more. And if f5, just bishop h7. Optically, though, it appears that black is worse with this piece stuck. I know the engine eval is in black's favor, but I don't know. I don't know too many people who'd want to play with this piece buried. You have to time your counterplay accurately if you go in for this position as black. It's just not to my liking. I like having a sense of harmony in my position, and when one piece is out of whack, it can throw the entire position off kilter. And that's what I was experiencing. So I think if I face this delayed knight f3 idea again... I'd probably do something maybe like e5, just take the center. Now that I look at that, there's nothing wrong with this move at all. And in fact, this could highlight uh, white's missing knight f3 move. His knight isn't attacking the e5 square, so maybe I should just take some of the center. Okay, so going to the moment where I played h5, this might be, just be a mistake. So he played f5 in reply. I took... He took this way. 
Computer also thinks E takes might be a bit better, but again, it's not showing a huge advantage yet. Although I suspect if it's plus 0 0.1, 0 0.2 or something, that's an advantage white can grow rapidly if black makes any error at all. But he took with a G pawn. I put the bishop on H7. Yeah, now bishop C5 stopped white from castling. And here I should castle. <laughs> I thought about that, but you know what I didn't like? I thought they were going to play knight B3. Ah, but I have knight. Knight takes E4. That's a nice shot. Protecting the bishop on C5. And if queen takes, I assume rook E8 is good. Force knight E5. Or knight takes c5, trying to gobble a few pieces. But black gets the pawn on f5, and this bishop reemerges. This position is good for black, despite white having two minor pieces plus a rook for the queen. We've got a queen plus two pawns and activity. Yeah, missed knight takes e4. That would have been a nice way to punish knight b3 had I gone castles and white had played that. So how does this work? If take here, knight e5... Just knight d7, develop, attack the pin piece. Bishop f4, queen h4, check. King d1, and I bet just take here. Nope, rook d8. And hound that king. Hmm, yeah, this looks good. So maybe I didn't have to fear knight b3 so much. So I played queen e7, trying to tie the knight down to the defense of the pawn. White went knight g5. I went here, trying to blockade e5. Now knight b3. Maybe this move is unnecessary, I don't know. Just wanted to give white something to think about. And then bishop back to d6. Here, I delivered a check. And bishop f2. Bishop f4 is not a move I thought about now. Retreating the bishop and hitting the knight. Makes a great deal of sense, though. If I could convince white to play this move... Knight takes h7. That would be tremendous. I would consider that a victory, even though I'm still technically worse. Maybe bishop b4 check wasn't good because c3 helps white. You can see here, king d1. The only reason king d1 is any good is because white can hide their king on c2. Otherwise, that move would be nonsense. So perhaps playing bishop b4 check on move 15 just gave white an excuse to hide their king on c2. There was some line I was looking at uh, white doing that. So here I took, white took with the queen, and then knight g4, just trying to make it complicated. Because if I castle, I lose the pawn on a, on a7. Always got to watch out for those undefended pawns and pieces, PSA. And if I play knight e5, hoping for knight d3 check, he'll just castle, covers the file. Also, I can't escape uh, to the queen side anymore. So knight g4, just trying to play dynamically. I thought there was a good chance white would play something like queen f4 or queen h4. Let's say queen f4, guarding the knight. In which case I would have gone here and then after castles, castled myself. So I was trying to convince the white queen to leave that diagonal where it was observing the a7 pawn. That was the whole point of knight g4, along with just creating some ruckus. But white took, I took here. Rook takes h5, queen takes g4. Yeah, white's playing this properly. Queen f3. Stronger is bishop f3, according to the computer. Then I'd have to go here. Rook h4, he can chase me around a little bit. Knight d2. And even here, the problem of the bishop on h7 persists. I have to be very careful that white doesn't get two minor pieces on the h-file and just hammers this piece. So he went for the trade. And I spent a lot of time on this next move. I must have spent probably 30 seconds, 45 seconds at least. Wow, close to a minute. It's a lot of time. Given that I only have two moves, queen takes f3 and knight e5, that's probably too much time. But I felt this position was critical because white's plan is crystal clear to me. He's trying to force the trade, do something with his king, whether it's king e2 or king f2 or castles, and then get this rook that's currently on a1 all the way over here. So I played this move in the game, but let's just say I do something indifferent like this. And then, I don't know, castle, white can castle. This is already a big deal. I don't think I can deal with that. Uh, maybe I can, knight e5. It seemed 
imminent, though, that the Rook was coming over there. Uh, 95 is a nice resource, though, especially with the Rooks lined up. So maybe White should play a King move then? What about King E2? In this case, Knight F6. Attack the Rook. Defend the Bishop. Rook H3. I'm still in this pin. I can't play Bishop G8. But I can do this and get out of the way. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I might have overrated this whole pin, but in my head it seemed it seemed to be the biggest feature of the position, the most important thing going on here. So I wanted to make sure I could neutralize that idea. So I played knight e5. We got a swap. And here white just started slowing down. I can't really explain it. I mean, they had two minutes to my minute 16. And they have a big advantage, almost decisive according to the computer. F6, trying to reorganize. So I was blocking the file, getting ready to play bishop g8. And inexplicably, white just started burning a lot of time per move. Yeah, this move cost white 30 seconds or so, e5. I take here. I thought about f takes e5, but I think their idea was this. That's why I didn't go for it. <laughs> I can castle, that's funny. Castle short. <laughs> and defend the pawn on g7. And somehow that's acceptable for black. Good example of late castling. So I took here. I was more so just playing off their time because it, it really seemed like white was hesitating. So and Here I had to play knight f7. I was originally intending to do this, but then rook h1 is a big issue because this knight is stuck. If I move it, I lose the rook on h8. So knight f7 and... Yeah, I spec white was probably winning up till the end of the game. All these moves are good. They just took too long to play them. White's up a pawn. My king is cut off on the 7th rank. The rest of the moves almost don't matter, as long as I don't blunder into mate. I almost played rook d6 here, which would be obviously a disaster in view of rook b8, followed by checkmate. It's a weird game. I almost feel like I don't deserve to win that one, but... Everything is a factor in chess. The moves, the clock, especially the clock and blitz. So even though my play wasn't the greatest here, I did make better use of the clock down uh, the stretch, down the last 10, 15 moves or so. My opponent did not. So I will make that adjustment in the future if I come across this line again. I'll make sure to play something like E5. I think taking the center is probably the right approach if the white knight is not on f3 i was throwing some moves out there autopilot which i've always warned you guys about not playing autopilot moves and i caught myself doing it intriguing pawn swamp approach though that white employed here anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll be back again soon with another one talk to you guys later bye